worried should we be that household debt levels are rising to pre-crisis levels? Not too worried. Uh, we're seeing pretty healthy levels of credit demand and credit issuance. Uh, we have a pretty unique vantage point uh, because we issue so many uh, credit products. Um, I don't think credit cycles die of old age. They're generally correlated with a recession and we're seeing very healthy jobs right now. And yet non-housing debt is also rising car loans, student loans, credit card debt. Headlines like the next credit crisis could be unfolding right under our noses. Is that overblown? I think so. If you look at the historical default levels on credit card debt, for example, uh, we're still below historical averages. So we're coming out of the trough, uh, but we're still below average. So talk to us a little bit about what NerdWallet does and how it, it sort of helps you navigate whether you're going to have an issue or not. So NerdWallet's uh, mission right now is to help make financial products shoppable. So we think that's a huge financial problem. You can save a ton of money by being able to easily compare the fees and the rates out there, and we make that process possible. The competition to be a sort of financial guidance one-stop shop is pretty fierce. You've got Credit Karma, Lending Tree, uh, all these different sites. You know, what makes you guys stand out? So we are relentlessly consumer first. I personally... Who isn't relentlessly consumer first? <laughs> or says so, at least. I spend so many hours in consumers' living rooms across the country. That is uh, something I think that is super important. Um, our, even our journalism team engages in a ton of user testing, and we use that to really iterate on our products and make it more useful. So you're actually visiting the homes of people across the country? Absolutely. Tell me about that. Some of the stories are really amazing. I think one of the stories that hasn't been told is just the story of volatility. So, so many employers are pushing business volatility onto wages. So month to month, uh, most of America is seeing volatility. And when you combine income volatility with expense volatility, that explains a lot of demand for the short-term credit that people are seeing. Now, you've got an interesting story. I know you've actually pulled a lot of people from Wall Street to work at the company. That's right. How is that working out? Uh, I think those are some of the most analytical uh, people, and we've got them cranking away at some of these analyses. So you take something quite simple, like how much home can I afford, and it really helps putting that quantitative mindset, uh, finding the drivers that matter, and presenting that to users in, in a simple way. So who are these? Are former bankers, former Goldman Sachs? Who are they? That's right. Uh, we've got a lot of ex-hedge fund analysts, a lot of ex-consultants, and uh, yeah, these are people that I pulled from my social network while I was bootstrapping NerdWallet the first six years of our existence. Is the political environment and political uncertainty, is that impacting any of the people that you're talking to? Uh, not a ton. Um, I think it's not having a huge impact on credit demand as far as we can tell right now. So when you look ahead, what are going to be the biggest issues when it comes to the fintech landscape, even amidst, you know, political uncertainty, potential tax reform, all that? Right. Well, I think people are doing an amazing job building a better mousetrap in many different areas, whether it's robo-advisors, peer-to-peer lending, et cetera. What we're seeing now is a lot of the incumbents, like Goldman Sachs uh, and all of the uh, asset managers, are stealing these ideas and incorporating them into their uh, workflows. And so that's creating a lot of confusion. So there's just a proliferation of choice, and that's for, I think there's a huge need for a review and comparison system like NerdWallet to help out consumers.